streaming on YouTube. So the recording is on and the YouTube stream is also on. Okay, so Brendan, you tell me where you want me to start. Okay, <clears throat> just a moment. Okay, we are good. Okay, everyone's ready to go. Everyone can, everyone can hear me, I hope. I think um, Lake and Cole is having a hard time with her audio, so I, I think yeah. I'm going to actually be the one to lead, uh, control the slides, but I think most, if not all of us, are, are on and ready to go. Okay. Okay, so Kaz will be um, doing the slides? Yes, I think we're going to do it that way. Okay, well, let me make you the co-host then, because okay. you'll only be able to... Um, to do the slides if you are a host or a co-host. Okay. 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 So you're now a co-host. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Okay. Brandon, you ready to rock and roll? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, great. Okay, then uh, we'll go ahead and start. So uh, formalities begin. Great. So um, welcome to the May 5th, 2020 meeting of Manhattan Community Board 6 Parks, Landmarks, and Cultural Affairs Committee. My name is Mark Thompson. I'm the vice chair of the committee. Um, this meeting is now called to order at 7.08 p.m. on May 5th, 2020. Um, tonight, we are glamorously, graciously, and technically joined by our district manager, Jesus Perez, and community associate and techie, Brendan Berth. So, and thank you, too, for uh, taking care of all this and for taking care of me earlier today uh, with all of our technology and stuff. Thank you so much. Um, so being a Zoom meeting, this is not um, like our usual meetings. We're not passing out junk food. Um, I won't be cracking too many jokes. Um, and we're going to try and keep this quick and easy since it's kind of complicated. So for members of the public um, who are not members of the committee, you can raise any questions or comments that you may have through the question and answer feature of Zoom. Um, and then when there, if there is time after the committee discussion, we'll then field questions from the public. So as you should know by now, unless you haven't been to a meeting before, we take committee member questions first, then we turn it to the um, public. So that way um, our technical obligations are completed to the committee members. Um, and I would like to thank Reshma for taking minutes this evening. I applaud you again, so thanks so much. Um, next step, we'll be taking attendance by roll call. So I'm gonna turn that over to Brendan to handle the roll call. Um, Take it actually, away. Mark, actually, Mark, I'm going to handle the work. Okay, great. Okay, great. All right. Okay, thanks. All right. Just to make sure. Our, our, just to make sure. Our, 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 can anybody? Can people um, put themselves can on mute? Can anybody? Can people um, put themselves on mute? Because we're beginning a lot of echo. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is everyone able to? Are people able to unmute themselves? Just so we can test that. Okay. If, they are okay. I'm going to call uh, your. I'm yeah. going to call. All right, committee members. I will call your name, and you will unmute yourself. When your name is called, please stay present, um, and then we'll announce if we've got quorum. Okay. Pamela Vassell. All right. Mark Thompson. Daddy. Here, present, Martin, whatever. Rocks, Mark. Martin Barrett. Present. Matt Bondi. Present. Jean, Jeannie D'Onofrio. Present. Thank you. Adam Hartke. Present. Anton Molnar. Present. Raj Nayar. Present. Kevin O'Keefe. Present. Rishma Patel. Present. Ronnie White. Ronnie. Present. Gary Papish. Dean Stephanidis. Dean is here. Dean, I saw him. Yeah. All right. He may, he may not be able to unmute. Hmm. Okay. All right, then we have a quorum. Okay, great. I have one quick question, Jesus. Um, 
there are people who are there who are not of the committee and just to show that they have been, that they were in present at the meeting, we know who they are by their little pictures showing up so we can record their names um, in the minutes. Yes, we can. And they will be, we'll get a report of everyone who signed in as a mm -hmm. member of the public after the meeting. After the meeting. Okay. All right, and they get a gold star. Yeah, and I'm actually able to view star. it too. So I'm writing it down from that. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Okay. Uh, next, um, we'd like to adopt the agenda. So rather than having everyone vote on this, um, so the agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office um, and is here on your screen. I hope you can see it. So committee members, um, if there's no objection, we'll adopt the agenda as stated. So committee members, if you object to adopting the agenda, you can raise your hand through Zoom and say that you object, which would be odd. Um, I'll give you about 10 seconds to um, go through. So I'll count to 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Seeing and hearing no objections, um, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. Um, next, let's go on to adopting the minutes from our last meeting. Um, the minutes from the March 3rd meeting were also distributed to committee members ahead of time. I'm, I hope you have all read them. Uh, they were exciting and thrilling. Um, I was up late at night enjoying them. Um, if there is no objection, um, as we did with the agenda, we'll adopt these three sets of minutes, or these, no, this one set of minutes, sorry. Um, so committee members, if you object to adopting the agenda, or the minutes, then raise your hand through Zoom. Um, if you have like a typo or something like that, um, just send it to Jesus or Brendan. Um, we don't need to you know, do that, just uh, typos are okay. We'll fix them later on. So I'm gonna do a countdown again. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, going once and one. Okay, so uh, seeing and hearing no objections, the minutes from the March 3rd meeting have been adopted and they're gonna be up on the website um, fairly soon. Um, so you can check on them then. Um, but anybody on the committee should already have them. If you have a typo or something, just I think if Jesus, if it's okay with you and Brendan, just have people send in any typos or many things to uh, to the office. That's fine. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so um, I'm gonna be tough uh, and set some ground rules, which we're all doing uh, in Zoom meetings to make it much easier. And I wanna commend Molly and the office currently guys for um, running a, an amazing first full board Zoom meeting last week, I think. Uh, it was awesome, so I hope that I can compete with you guys. Um, I doubt it, but we'll try. Um, so here's some ground rules. Nobody can speak until you're granted the actual floor, which is done by raising your hands. So committee members, if you have a question about committee business or wanna make a motion, raise your hands or Zoom. Um, if you click the participants icon, the participants panel is gonna show up down there with the raise hand thing and just tap that. And then this little hand is gonna show up by your face that um, um, I guess, Jesus, I don't know if you're controlling it or who's gonna see it. Um, uh, if you guys have a problem, just go into that chat function down below and type in what's going on and uh, Jesus or Brenda can help figure out what's going on. They'll go back and forth to you individually. Um, when you are given the floor to speak, I will identify you, um, try and keep some control here. Um, please keep yourself on mute. Um, I'm sure many of us have been in meetings where people were eating, belching, kids were screaming in the background. Um, Phone calls came in and people conducted business during a Zoom meeting, which happened a few days ago in my office, which was very funny, but awkward. Um, and also if you are on camera and you <clears throat> stand up to leave, like I would do right now, I am wearing pants. Um, make sure that you are wearing pants. And if not, just you know, turn your video off so we can't see you. <laughs> the very first Zoom meeting I had, um, we had an awkward moment. And that's all I'm gonna say. You can ask me about it later on. It's very embarrassing for somebody. Um, also, so by executive order, we have to keep a verbatim transcript of this meeting. So please keep your questions and comments really, really brief and succinct so that we don't have a massive transcript. And also it saves Reshma from tearing her hair out because I know she's already under stress with uh, COVID. So um, let's be nice to her and everyone else by just keeping it short, no grandstanding. Um, okay, so next we're gonna move on to committee business. Um, and this is the order of the adopted agenda. The first item on the agenda will be the certificate of appropriateness for modifications of the 61st and 62nd floors at 405 Lexington Avenue, AKA the Chrysler Building, my old home. 
Second will be a report from Mr. Wes Hamilton from the Department of Parks and Recreation. Third will be the chair's report. And fourth will be older no business. And at older no business, we can actually have a little bit of a um, discussion about stuff afterwards when we'll take everyone off mute and we can talk about stuff. Um, so uh, that's pretty much. Um, when we do a vote though, it's gonna be done by roll call and Jesus, you'll repeat that um, process again. So we'll have people on and off saying yes or no or abstain or not entitled. Um, and we'll do that as we will do a motion to move and then second it. Um, okay, and that's pretty much it for now. So why don't we move into the agenda? Durham rural, please. Okay, <coughs> so uh, Cass, I think you're up first. Item number one is the certificate of appropriateness for modifications to the 61st and 62nd floors at 405 Lex. Take it away. And I think Jesus, you're, uh, you and Brendan are running this piece, right? Uh, um, no, the applicant is going to. Okay. The screen. Okay. I just thought the cast has left. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Lincoln, are you able to share your screen instead? <laughs> so, oh, right Cass now, I'll. Okay. Cass is back. Okay. Hi, Cass. Welcome back. Sorry about that. You all can okay. hear me? <laughs> yeah. All right. First time that's all happened. Uh, that's okay. We love you anyway. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me make you let me make you a co-host, Cass, so that you are able to share screen. Okay, I'll um, go ahead and do that. Um, okay, let me try again. Let's see. Now that you're a co-host, you should be able to share your yep. screen. Okay. Ah, here it goes. Okay. Whoa, awesome. We've done it. Oh, I don't, I'm not seeing, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing that yet. I still just see Manhattan Community Board 6. Hmm. You could be, uh, it's the view that you're, uh, you are on speaker view so that you see the person who has, who has spoken. Do you now see my picture? I don't see anything. It's just your screensaver. And um, there are no controls. Maybe I should log back on. Mm. Are you on the computer or are, are you on your phone? I'm on my phone to speak, but I clicked on the link to enter the meeting. Okay. If you are if you on the computer, you look on the top right hand corner of the screen, there should be some uh, icons that emerge, uh, swap shared screen with video. Yeah, what's really weird is I'm not seeing any of the standard Zoom controls. Hmm. I don't know why. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'll be, still be on by phone, I believe. I'm going to close the screen and well, then let's, try the link again. Well, you dialed in, correct? You, you, if, if you dialed in. I used my phone to dial in, yes. Well, if you dialed in as opposed to using the Zoom app on a phone device, then uh, you would be hearing the audio. Um, oh, but I what? linked from your invite on my computer. So I normally, I do this all the time. I should be able to be in the meeting. Yeah, Leslie, try to um, log off and log back on. Uh, I do get a sense yeah. that the committee can see this. So. Yeah. Uh, we can. We'll, we'll, Let we'll me just continue and, and yeah. I just closed out and I've reopened, but again, I'm not getting any of the normal Zoom. It's kind of weird. Okay, it's okay. I have the presentation. Oh. Uh, I'll be giving most of it, and I have a copy, so okay. I'll just have to do it that way. I don't want to hold up the meeting. All right. Um, so, and Leslie, just tell me. Um, we'll, we'll coordinate on page numbers as we go. I'll advance um, when you. Uh, when you're ready. Sure, it's not a big, it's not a big deal. Okay. So I believe Sheldon is going to start. Yes. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, Sheldon. Okay. Uh -huh. So yep. I'm, I'm Sheldon Wardiger. I'm with our farm in charge of design and development. Uh, first, I just want to thank you all for making this possible to have your committee hearing on Zoom and accommodate the landmark application process during this unprecedented time. Of course. Um, though we're all fixated on the short term, we as RFR continue to keep our sights 
on coming out of this shock and return to our future plans in better times. You know, as a company, we thrive on owning landmark buildings and believe that they represent the best in architectural design and who we are as a city. The Chrysler Building, which is one of the most recognized buildings in the world and a beacon in the New York City skyline, is an icon that needs to be preserved and continue to remain relevant in the marketplace to survive. We're coming to you this evening with an application regarding a new bar and lounge that we want to redesign and build on the 61st and 62nd floors to be known as the Cloud Club, which is in homage to the original club that opened in 1930 when the building was completed and closed in 1979. Uh, we're here because there are a few details for which we look for your support and Phil will allow us to increase the quality of the space enormously to match the great landmark of which the Chrysler building is. So uh, I, th I thank you for being here and allowing this process to continue. Uh, I wish you all good health and I leave it up to my team to uh, continue the presentation. Great. Thank you, Sheldon. This is- You're welcome. Thanks, Sheldon. This is Cass Stackelberg from Higgins Quaysborough. And I'm just gonna speak briefly before Leslie Jabs of Gensler um, takes you through the design presentation. But um, we wanted to just highlight a few things about, uh, about this important project. Um, the scope is fairly limited. Um, as Sheldon mentioned, much of the work is actually occurring on the interior at the 61st and, sec uh, 61st and 62nd floors. But there are um, two components that we wanted to share with you. We're bringing to, to the Landmarks Commission as part of a public hearing presentation uh, on May 19th. And the two components um, are for uh, the installation of uh, eight foot tall glass panels on the north and south setbacks um, up on the 61st floor. And the other component is uh, replacing um, non-historic replacement aluminum windows that are one over one in configuration, um, also at, six, at the 61st and 62nd floor with single light windows. And while those two um, interventions, the glass panels and the window replacement, um, seem like they might be um, sig potentially having a significant visual impact on this building, um, what I think is important to remember is the fact that um, the work itself is 600 feet up in the air um, and can really only be viewed through a zoom lens, as you'll see, from two or three blocks away. So while these um, changes are, um, you know, additive, uh, and they do, you know, they do exist up on those setbacks. Um, as you will see, they really are imperceptible, and I think so much of this, um, you know, so much of your considerations and the commission's considerations are what are both the physical and visual impact of the work uh, that's being proposed on the landmark. So I think it's important to sort of understand the scope, but also understand what that effect is um, on the landmark. Um, the site plan on the right, obviously you know the building, as Sheldon said, this is one of the most recognized uh, buildings in the world. It is perhaps one of the most iconic New York City landmarks, um, <clears throat> an individual landmark designated in 1978 along with uh, portions of the lobby um, on Lexington Avenue, occupying about a half of the block between 42nd and 43rd. Uh, the next slide, again, sort of highlighting the areas of work on this detail plan and we include this photo from 1930, which was taken soon after completion of the building, um, just to point out the areas of work. So I don't know, if I, hopefully you can see my, my cursor, um, but um, this is the 61st floor where the gargoyles are, um, or eagles as some refer to them. That's the 61st floor, and there's a setback on the south elevation and on the north elevation. Uh, we are proposing um, glass panels um, for security measures um, and, and Leslie will take you through the program on 61. The other scope of work is replacing the one over one windows um, at 61 and 62 um, with a single light windows. And again, it is a change from the historic window configuration, but I think what you'll see is it's, it's really imperceptible. And the way that the windows are articulated um, on this building in particular um, are by groups. And so one reads the, the openings and the black brick that surround the openings, um, but um, even, even close in, it's difficult to read the configuration of the window 
much less at 600, 700 feet in the, in the air. So I think, as I said, uh, we are obviously proposing changes. They're proposing, pro uh, these are changes that we uh, are hoping you can support and we'll be sharing with the commissioners at the end of May. Uh, but I think the key thing is really about um, visibility and sort of uh, effect, visual effect uh, on the landmark. And with that, um, I will have Leslie take it over. And Leslie, just tell me when you're ready to go to the next slide. We're on the comparative plans. Right. So here, what we're showing you is the floor plan of the 61st floor on the left. And then the changes are indicated on the proposed plan to the right. The terraces themselves are actually quite narrow. So the only two terraces that we are asking to add a security screen and are considering to occupy are located on the north and on the south sides of the building, 43rd Street and 42nd Street, respectively. The other small setback roofs that you see in the corners are strictly uh, accessed for maintenance of the gargoyle relamping of the exterior building lighting. There is no work proposed at those smaller roof locations. The existing sliding doors that you see called out on the north and the south, we have not been able to find any historical references to these doors. They are aluminum and glass. They were not part of the replacement program so we really don't know historically uh, information about them. They are not referenced in the designation report. The dimensions are given there so that one can understand what we are doing in terms of the scale of it. We were asked about the fact that we have a different setback from the parapet to the long length versus to the sides. The sides require access for maintenance of the gargoyles themselves and access for relamping of the exterior building facade lights that are located at the gargoyles. We will show you images later. Next slide. Yep. This is the proposed and existing for the 62nd floor. There are no changes to the exterior facade per se. As Cass mentioned, the replacement of the double hung windows with single light windows is the request for this floor. There is no other work and we will show you the details later on in the presentation. The visual impact use study map. We have shown on the map by the small icons where these photographs have been taken. We have the existing photographs that you will see compared to recent photographs that were taken after the installation of the mock-up on the 62nd floor, I mean 61st terrace. Please note as you look through these photographs that wood stud framing was used to construct the mock-up, which is holding the low reflectivity, low iron glass that is being proposed. This wood stud framing is strictly there as part of the mock-up. And as we will demonstrate later in the presentation, there is no exposed framing. I think it is very clear from these photographs that there is very limited visual impact from the new security class screen. There is also clear from the photographs that the munton that occurs in the light over light is not a predominant feature and that these openings in the facade are really the primary reading of the overall masonry. The south view of the impact is taken two blocks away on Lexington Avenue. Lexington looking north is probably the most uh, prominent view that one can have of the terrace as we will see in the other images. And here we have provided a zoom in of, of the, uh, the, the mock-up 
photo and we've put a small red arrow there to actually be sure that you see in the zoom in the wood stud framing that will not even occur in the actual construction. I think it's very clear from this that it really is not legible from grade and that even the windows and the mountains are not legible from grade. We continue and I will not present each one in great detail, but simply to state where they are taken from. So now we're down at 36th Street in Lexington. We are six blocks away. Again, you cannot see the mock-up. The next image, we're over at 3rd Avenue and 42nd Street. You see one Vanderbilt go background. Again, you really cannot see either the mock-up nor the mountains for the double hung windows. The Tudor City view, which again, we're on 42nd Street, we are three blocks away. Uh, we have once again provided a zoom in for this one to indicate and you can see the line of where the eight foot high security screen would occur. You can see that there, but as you can see in the actual photo, Again, it really is not viewable or visible as a pedestrian. The one Vanderbilt view next, uh, we're a block and a half away, looking back to the east towards the building at Grand Central Station. And again, neither the glass security screen nor the windows would be visible. Here again, we just are now three blocks away at Fifth Avenue looking back and you cannot see the screen. We then go north on Lexington Avenue, looking to the south. The terraces themselves are very difficult to see close range to the building directly to the north, let alone see the new security screen. When we go further up to 49th Street on Lexington, looking south, there we start to get a good open view again of the terrace. Again, we have provided you with a zoom in and the mock-up is there. Uh, it's located on the left side of the terrace uh, from this view, but it really is not visible. Even in the zoom in, you can barely see it. The next slide is our visual impact view study diagram which simply shows that the, top, the glass screen is not even visible for, until you're at least a block away from the property. The sight line is cut off by the existing masonry parapet. Slide 16 then is showing on a 2D elevation, the relationship of the new security screen to the rhythm of the facade and its opening. We are also showing on this the single light windows as well for reference. Here we can see that the top of the screen is aligned with the top of the existing masonry openings. And the height of the screen has also been determined as is best practice within New York City for all recent outdoor terraces to be eight foot high to ensure the safety of any occupants that go outside. The glass screens are sized at four foot. We have a four inch gap between the glass and that we will show you later is to allow for proper maintenance and cleaning of the windows. When we look at the enlarged plans on 17, and we see them from on the terrace looking at the new security screen, we now are able to see how structurally we are able to have this cantilevered piece of glass with no visible framing, either vertically between the panels or across the top of the panels. And in order to do this, as we will show you details later, we end up with a structural steel support that is of significant size, but still lower than the existing parapet line. 
So none of that will be visible to the public or anyone outside the building. The glass also does not touch the facade of the building. So we will show you later in the rendering, but because the steel and it is a full cantilever design of the glass panel, it is never connected to the building and is freestanding in that regard. On page 18 are the details that really start to show how we would do this. One of the things we would like to remove is the existing steel pipe rail guard that is there on the terrace that you see in the photo on the left. This steel pipe rail in no way meets any level of safety or code requirement. It is not in the designation report. It does not have a finish that is appropriate to the Narosta steel that is very much part of this building. We believe it actually will be an enhancement to have it removed. The glass screen itself that you see the enlarged detail in the lower right will be set. The structural steel tube sits on a structural plate that will be directly attached to the steel beams. We then have on top of that, the clamping shoe that allows us to have this cantilevered glass without any support. The wind load up here is significant at this height. It is 60 pounds per square foot. And this has impacted some of our decisions that we will talk about later on for the sliding doors. The back, we do have a decorative trim that will sit between the parapet and the new glass. That is decorative and it is not functional and will not be supported by the parapet itself. If we then go to the next image on 19, we have the existing photo on the left. And then on the right shows what the proposed new security screen will look like. That is a stainless steel decorative cover for that structural steel that you saw in the detail. The emergency lighting that, allow, that will be required for exiting of the terrace will be located in that shoe. So there will be no exposed new ex exterior lighting required for the occupancy of this terrace. As you can see in the photo, we have intentionally set the top of the new shoe and its cover below the lip of the existing Narosta steel that you are seeing on the left. That is to ensure that we are not required to really alter that steel profile of the Narosta in any way. The next slide, I don't need to give you large detail on the construction again, as we've already discussed it, but what you see here at the east-west again is the two foot six wide clearance that we're allowing to the uh, screen on the east and west end to ensure that a workman is able to be outside of the secured uh, terrace area and access the gargoyles for maintenance purposes. 21 is showing us then the view. And again, you can see here in the existing that there are two large uh, building facade lights that do require access for relamping and to be maintained along with seeing the gargoyle this also is showing you again, and this is accurate under propose, that the glass screen and the stainless will, shoe will not be connected to the masonry. For the window and door replacement on page 22, the elevation here is really to talk about the sliding doors and the punched window opening window replacement for 61 and 62. As we can see looking at this, 
these are not dramatic changes in terms of the character of the building. The existing masonry will remain at the same size for all of the windows. For the sliders, and I think this is shown, yes, if we go to page 23, for the sliding doors, we are requesting to drop the sill under these sliders that you see on the left in order to allow us to gain a uh, smooth entrance from the terrace to the interior, allowing for ADA wheelchair access to the exterior from inside by having a level threshold. We are also, in order to meet code, we are unable to maintain the two equal panels that are on the existing. If you look at the upper uh, there, you'll see the existing sliders are two equal panels. Those panels do not allow for legal egress and they do not allow for ADA wheelchair access. So while we are keeping everything as much the same as we can, uh, regulatory requirements do, do require that adjustment. We would note that the terrace sliding doors are not part of this application for the public commission and are shown for information and will be going through staff level approval. The window replacement details on slide 24 really are there to help again to show that the glass is the same glass. It will match exactly because the replacement windows, in fact, were just done within the last few years and have modern low-E coatings and other materiality that is available to us today. The aluminum itself will match in color. The key dimensions, and by that it is the line of sight between the glass itself to the existing lintel and masonry openings, the dimensions still will match exactly, even though these windows will have a top hung hinge you will not see a different size of glass or vision light. The profiles do have some slight differences as it makes its way to the window. But if you zoom in and look at it, the overall impact when you are looking at this is going to be from masonry to the actual glass line. And those lines have been matched. The next, the setback and plane of the window I did want to mention also does match exactly where it is today. On slide 25, we are looking at where this window occurs in the Nerosta steel cladding that starts on level 61. And again, these windows are the replacement windows that you were looking at. They did not disturb the cladding and there is no reason that these new windows would disturb the cladding as well. And that is it for our presentation. So if there are questions, we're ready for them. Great, thank you, Leslie. That's very thorough and pretty straightforward, so thanks. Um, we're gonna do the questions um, as normal. The committee is allowed to ask questions first. Um, since I'm on a limited screen, which I can only see three people, um, each person on the committee who would like to ask a question, if you could raise your hand, um, and then uh, Brendan or Jesus, um, can you then call on people in the order that you get them? And then we'll have each person ask their question. Um, this might take a minute because I have to switch screens here. It looks like Marty Barrett would like the floor. Okay, I recognize Marty Barrett. Hey, Marty. <laughs> and you can unmute yourself. And then um, ask your question. And then I guess um, I'll help him. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> what is the use of the two floors? Sheldon, do you want to take that question? Are you okay? I'll take it. Uh, and when, when the building was built, uh, William Van Allen, the architect of the Chrysler building, designed a basically a private club for 
then the Chrysler organization and Texaco. But it was ended up being a, a, an executive lounge for the major tenants of the building and uh, became just part of the legacy of this building. It was, uh, I, I wouldn't say that the design was, ex- was extraordinary, but it was, it was a club and it had a culture to it. Uh, we are just looking for ways to reinvigorate the Chrysler building, bring back some of its former glory, add some energy and excitement to the building. Uh, and this is one of many ideas that we're planning to do, but we are planning to create a public bar lounge. Uh, it could also be a catering facility event space for tenants of our building to use just for their own recreation for uh, meals, drinks, but also for meetings and presentations. But it's uh, basically uh, open for lunch. Then there's uh, a bar that's available at night. And on weekends, it can possibly be used for event space. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and uh, well, just to preempt another question, the, the, the terraces are meant to be accessory to the restaurant bar. Uh, the, the views up there are extraordinary. The, the sight lines to the Eagles, you know, un- until you see them in person, you, you don't appreciate how great they are. You know, you, you see them from the street, but seeing them up close is, is wonderful. And we just want to give patrons the opportunity to experience both the city views and some of the architectural features of the building. Um, Sheldon, can I add on a question to that? This is Mark. Um, who will be operating the club and you'll have a liquor license so you'll eventually come back to a different committee here at the community board just as a heads up, which I'm sure you know. Uh, if you don't mind, do I, I would prefer not to disclose the operators, oh, okay. but they are, they are major op, uh, event planners. They have other venues in the city. They've been well vetted. We actually chose mm-hmm. them. They didn't choose us. Okay. Um, and uh, we have tremendous confidence in them. Okay, that's good. Great, thank you. Mark, uh, Jeannie D'Onofrio would like the floor. Okay, Okay. great. Jeannie, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, just a quick question about the windows. Is there a reason why it's just that, that those small set of windows, is it just an aesthetic reason um, uh, that they're, you're converting from a double home to a single home? There are two reasons uh, that we are looking to do this. And one, the primary one is the views. When you are inside the building, uh, the mountain actually ends up being at about five foot six above the floor. And since this venue is all about the views, looking out and things like that, to not have that um, is something that's a great enhancement. The other reason that we are proposing to do this has to do with the operation of the windows themselves. There are some ceiling features within the interiors um, that will make it uh, easier for us to operate a hinged window system versus the double home. Okay. Hey, thank you. Adam thank you. Larson would like the floor. Okay, Adam, I recognize you. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, thanks. Yeah, you. Thanks, thanks for presenting to us. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I've wanted, I've wanted to go to the Cloud Club, you know, for over a decade after reading about it on Wikipedia. So I'm glad you're doing this and really excited to see what you've been and I hope that you come back to us with an updated uh, cocktail menu at some point. That'd be really <laughs> <laughs> We do have a mixologist who's part of our project team. So can't disclose who it is right now, but okay. I can tell you there's going to be some amazing cocktail. <laughs> well, we also we, proud. Yeah. And also, you know, when the pandemic is over and we can return to real meetings, we can actually meet there, right? <laughs> Right, Sheldon? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, sorry, just kidding. No. You can. I mean, I'll tell you that we're all waiting for when those restaurants can open. Oh, yeah, it'll be very nice. It, okay. it, it's, yeah. I mean, the whole world has changed yeah. since we, we, we have these visions. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Yeah, 
it looks like Martin Barrett would like the floor again. Okay, Marty? Yeah, if the glass panels and, and what, what they're uh, connected to is not connected to the building, uh, how safe is it with the excessive winds that would be up there? All right, let me go back to that section. And, and Leslie, I'm going to slide um, 18 just to illustrate the section. Um, 18 certainly, or, certainly, no. sure. So uh, as you know, uh, structural engineers, and just to clarify, both we have the Doris uh, and, and Joe Lieber who did the, mm -hmm. the rock center screen, which is a, a very similar design. The wind loads here are 60 pounds per square foot. The thickness of the glass itself is designed to take the load in addition to the connection system at the base. And all of this is stainless steel. It's all, you know, hefty stuff. Those, those pieces that you're seeing there are one inch thick steel. It, it is not small stuff, uh, but all of this has been engineered and it will, of course, have full engineering done for it. Uh, but the basis for the wind loading and everything makes it, I mean, this is safe. This isn't something that's never been done. Um, so we, we have no concerns with its safety. Is, was there a specific safety concern that you had? So it, it, if it could be blown forward towards the, uh, towards the terrace or blown out and so and, and down into the street that that was the uh, concern but you're, you're saying that it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't move considering the the steel so I'll <coughs> well engineering is an amazing design i i know it's not open yet but if you were to go see hudson yards um you know ob deck if you mm -hmm. go see one vanderbilt's ob deck and all of those buildings are a thousand feet uh, again, they're all having to be designed for the type of wind loads that we're referring to here. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, next question. There do not appear to be any more hands up. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for all your great questions. Um, so seeing that there are no more questions and I have no questions, um, would someone like to make a motion? Uh, if you want to, well, not all hands at once. Now. <laughs> okay. So, did I hear someone say a motion to approve? And who was that? Second. So, motion to approve was put forward by whom, so that Rashma can write this down. Second. It, it, it's me, Ronnie. Okay, so Ronnie did the motion to approve, and the second yeah. was that Marty. Yeah. Okay, so so Ronnie and then Marty. Okay, so Rashmi, you got that. Okay, so there's a motion to uh, approve. Um, now there will be, um, if that motion's made and seconded, so um, we'll now take a vote um, on a motion to approve by roll call. So take it away, Jesus. Okay. All right, we're and Pamela Vassell, not here. Mark Thompson. Aye. Okay. Martin Barrett. Approve. Matt Bondi. Approve. Jeannie D'Onofrio. Approve. Adam Hartke. Aye. Anton Molnar. Approved. Raj Nair. Approved. Kevin O'Keefe. Approve. Rishma Patel. Rishma Patel. Approve. Ronnie White. Approve. Thank you. Uh, Gary Papush, not here. Dean Stephanides. Approved. Thank you. And the motion carries with uh, 11 4 0 against. 
zero abstentions, zero not entitled. Okay, great. Now we have the next big pressing this question. This is, uh, oh, sorry. I was actually probably going to ask the same thing. Um, who's okay. writing the resolution? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who would like to write this resolution? Do I hear a volunteer? I'll write it. Oh, great. Was that Adam Hartke? That was Adam Hartke. Adam Hartke wrote it. Okay. So I was going to actually offer Raj Nayar a donut if he was going to write it, but since Adam said he would do it without being pushed, well, I'll give I, you I would love two. Raj's assistance. <laughs> well, you, no, you're going to get two donuts, Adam. Oh. Score, right? Sorry, Raj, you lost. Um, <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, so, um, gosh, I guess, uh, you know, Cass, Leslie, Lecken, and Sheldon, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. We all look forward to um, seeing the completed product. Um, and the next step will be uh, our full board meeting, which is next Wednesday, right? Um, this will be brought up. Um, you guys, since this was unanimous, I mean, Jesus, I'm pretty sure they do not need to attend the meeting or Zoom in to do it. Um, if one of you would like to, that's okay. Um, just in case there are any questions, chances are there won't be. But um, if somebody wants to zoom in, that's great. And then um, if we do have a question, we'll know you're there because we have our ways. And um, you know, maybe we can bounce you in. But um, chances are there won't be much discussion um, on this, I hope. So well, thank you all. Great. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Andrew. Thank you great. for thank your you. time. And it was great sort of seeing and hearing you all again. And um, Sheldon, say hi to Michael for me. Send him my best. I, um, I will. OK, thank great. You. Thank, thank you all. OK. And, uh, Thank you. Later. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Okay, great. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, pretty interesting. Um, I, you know, I think I told a bunch of you, I, I used to work in that building many, many years ago, so it's pretty cool to see it getting fixed up like that. Um, so next um, on our agenda, um, we're going to torment and torture Wes Hamilton. Uh, with a report from Parks and Recreation. So Wes, you want to, um, Wes, come on down to the podium, grab a donut and talk to us. <laughs> I wish I could have a donut. Uh, I really do. Uh, I, 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 missed, I missed the treats before the, before the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Soon again, soon again. We hope so, yes. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone, as always, and uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us here today on Zoom. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of updates. What I hope to do was try to uh, inform everybody. Uh, basically, what is open and where we're at. Um, so, I mean, everybody knows a lot of parks have been closed. All of our playgrounds have been closed. Um, our handball courts and basketball courts are closed. Um, but I'll try to update you as to what areas are open. And, uh, and there are some that we have partially open openings where you can exercise because we do want to encourage we want everybody to social distances there's no group play in our parks but we do want you to get out and exercise and enjoy some of the nice beautiful weather we had today and hopefully have so just a quick rundown what we have and and hopefully everybody understands that everything's fluent and everything changes as it is now hopefully we get back to moving forward and progressing and opening up but but what we have now that is closed is Murphy Brothers Playground is closed. Uh, St. Augustus Golden is closed. Mary O'Connor, MacArthur Playground, and Albano are all completely closed. Um, Robert Moses is mostly closed. The comfort station is closed, and the basketball court and handball courts are closed. But we do have the MPPA what we call the multi-purpose play area, which is basically the asphalt um, softball field, you will. Um, that area is open. Um, you know, it's uh, basically open. So again, you can get out and do some exercise and people can ride their bikes in there, whatever you want to do in there and just try to, you know, enjoy the open space. So that's a partial opening at Robert Moses. And then the parks that are open with the exception of all of our, I forgot to mention that all of our dog parks are closed as well. Hmm. But Stuyvesant is open with the exception of the dog run. Uh, Glick and Waterside Pier is open. Peters Field is open. The basketball courts have been removed, but uh, you, you are allowed to go in and exercise inside of that. 
multi surface play area. Dag Hammershaw is open and it is also continuing to do the market because that's a consi- uh, essential business with food service. So uh, the, the green market is still open on Wednesdays and Dag Hammershaw Park is open. Ralph Bunch is open. Tri V is open. Peter Depp Mall is open and the five Sutton parks are all open. Um, and hopefully any, enjoy those spaces and uh, hopefully everyone in practice social distancing in those locations. Um, speaking of social distancing, you know, we've, we've had a, uh, for the most part, we've seen most people uh, behaving. There has occasionally comes up with some uh, cases where people have uh, maybe doing group play or maybe too many people at one, at one time. Uh, the Blue Angels air show was one example of, <laughs> of where we had a lot of uh, social distancing issues. However, it, it cleared out very quickly afterwards. But uh, what I wanted to mention to everyone on the board is that uh, also on our three one, on 311, if you happen to see people not practicing social distancing, you can call, uh, go to the 311 app and put it in. And basically for our areas that are open, that's how we're kind of addressing it. Um, if we get complaints, we go check it out. If we get a lot of complaints, we'll shut it down. Uh, we're trying not to shut down our open spaces. We want to provide as much space as we possibly can. And we've already got most of your playgrounds closed. So, you know, we're really trying not to close down any more spaces. But if it's if it's unsafe and it's unhealthy, then, uh, you know, with everyone's help, you know, we will to try to keep everyone safe. So, uh that app is available to the public as well as uh, our staff checks these sites. And if we see it, we also report that uh, there's crowding conditions in these sites. So that's really all the updates I have now. As I mentioned, all of our events and all of our volunteer programs are canceled through June. Um, hopefully we revisit that around June and hopefully we're moving forward and progressing. But with that being said, is there any questions that anybody has for, for me and Parks? Um, yeah, I think we probably got a lot of questions. So I'm going to hold mine off to the end because I'm sure others will ask them. So, um, Jesus, do you want to go ahead and... Um, sure. We've got Adam Harkey who would like the floor. Okay, Adam. Thank you. Adam, please unmute yourself. I will help him. Okay. Yeah. Take Adam, his donuts away. Man, what a rookie mistake. I'm sorry. Hey, we still love you. You still get donuts. Ah, oh, man. Hey, Wes, it's great to see you. I hope you're well. Um, I just wanted to commend your staff on sort of the attentiveness that they've shown to Waterside Pier and the Glick. You know, they're, they're there a lot. They, they've painted the benches. You know, um, it's a very popular destination right now, as you said, in terms of closing or, or limited open space that we already have. Um, and so thank you for making that amenity, you know, what it is. Um, is, is Parks actively working with DOT in terms of the Open Streets Initiative? Is there anything that you're aware of in the district, potentially like um, maybe seeing some of the open streets coming to um, uh, a street near us, basically? Um, at least at, not at my level. They're, they're not informing me. However, they are trying to make the open streets adjacent to some of the parkland properties where they can, but I think it's primarily a DOT initiative. Uh, I believe that they're taking the lead control of, of the closure of the street. So uh, not as much with parks. I mean, it doesn't affect the parks as much. It, it, it you know, it, it does help us, um, but it's not really, um, Effectively, we don't have a lot of input as to where they want to close down or where they want to do that, at least not at my level. Um, I've had that question before. If I find out information, I'm happy to update the community board. But at this time, I don't have any um, any information of any street closures in, in, in community board six at this time. Okay, great. Thanks, Wes. Hey, Seuss, do you want to give us an update on that just briefly? Uh, regarding, I'm sorry. Just the, regarding street closures? The well, we don't have, we, we've not received any word uh, mm -hmm. from DOT of any streets that are being closed in our district. Um, we have received from DOT uh, a list of criteria that any proposed open street should adhere to. Um, DOT is asking for community organizations 
to effectively sponsor uh, a street. Mm -hmm. um, and we have sent that information out to the bids and local community organizations in our district. Some of the neighborhood groups might be interested in sponsoring a street. Um, there's a form that needs to be filled out that DOT mm -hmm. will consider. And if uh, all the criteria are met and all the forms are in order, then there might be a street uh, opened in our district. Yesterday, the Transportation Committee met for its normal monthly meeting. They did pass a resolution that will be heard at full board on May 13th. It does have a list of streets that um, CB6 proposes uh, to, be, uh, to be closed. Great, okay. So everyone should be at full board next week to uh, vote on that resolution then. Right, okay. Thanks, Jesus. Uh, next. Mark, there is um, one oh. question from a committee member. However, mm -hmm. there is also a hand raised from uh, our attendees. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Do you want, how do you want those questions uh, to be, do you want them to be typed in or do you want them to be, do you just want them raised their hands? Um, can you, can the person type it in just really briefly and then they can be a little more elaborate when they actually speak, but make sure it's a question um, rather than a statement. You know, it's gotta be a, a concise question. So if the person not of the committee, the public could actually just type in a little blurb of what the question's about, that'd be great. And send that in that way. Okay. Matt Bondi would like the floor. Okay, Matt. Hello, Matt. Hello, thanks, Mark. Uh, really just a quick comment about how beautiful our Sutton Place parks are and how, what a resource they are for our community. I'm homeschooling two children. I try to get them out. I've become, you know, a, a first and a fifth grade teacher and, uh, and a coach. You know, I change my appearance and I become a coach. Um, and what we find ourselves doing is trying to walk along the FDR, you know, I call it the FDR Drive, the Esplanade uh, that starts on 60th Street. And so uh, eventually that will be expanded. Uh, but I find that it, it gets crowded. There are people out there looking for space and they're really looking to exercise. And this is more comment more than anything. I'll just leave it at that. But this would really be a great, uh, it, it's really a shame I should say that we don't have the Queensboro Oval to kick soccer balls, to throw balls and play catch with our parents and our children, to ride bicycles, to run around in. Um, and this is just a good example of how we need to think in the future when we concession off um, parkland in our neighborhoods. Anyway, thank you very much. This would be really great to have that. If that's in Community Board 8 though. When... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. You know, but the, it's like right there on the border. I know. I know. It's borderlands. Yeah. It should yeah. be ours. Yeah. We got you. We should get the old one. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. It is what it is. But I just, you know, it's just for food for thought for the future. You know, because it will be. It's a really big space, and I find there's no. I see people kicking. I see people throwing baseballs in the cul-de-sacs, and I see people kicking soccer balls in the little 55th Street. Um, Sutton Place Park, and I mean, how far can you really kick a ball? Ten feet, you know. Um, so it's just, uh, it's just kind of a shame, but it is what it yeah. is. And yeah. Thank you for letting me say that, Mark. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, great. Thanks. Okay. Um, hey, Sue. Uh, okay. Do we have a committee person, or we do have? Uh, it looks like Lou Sapersky uh, has his hand up. He has not okay. typed in his question, but okay. Uh, Lou, type your type your question in so that we can hey, Sue can filter it, and then was there anybody else that had a question? No, there's a statement from a uh, Jack. Yeah, what's, what, what's with the Brady Bunch? Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to liven it up. I didn't want to like do it while the Chrysler building was up because they're so serious. But you know, hey, you know, didn't quite get there in the screen, but it's, uh, it's good enough. So there I is, like it. There is one question. There's a, it's a statement from Jack Collins, head of East End Hockey Association. Uh, they make a few statements, but then there is one question. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, is placing a carpet-based turf surface a good idea for our parts? Perhaps Wes can address that? Um, well, I, I don't really see the relation with the COVID-19 and, and the turf. I, I do know what Jack has, has issues with the, with the hockey there at Robert Moses, so I, I get where he's coming from, but um, um, we have, and I don't mean to share, but like in District 8, there is asphalt green. It has Astro tur uh, or synthetic uh, grass, and there's you no know, issues there with related to COVID-19. 
uh, it's being utilized very much. So in the relationship to, to that, I really don't have much of a comment other than uh, uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't see the correlation between uh, the, the virus and the synthetic turf. OK, thanks. Thanks. Thank there you. Was, there was a question submitted by Kathy Thompson. Oh, um, yes. She has a question. She would like to know what is meant by sponsoring a street. Um, so uh, essentially, DOT is looking for community groups, community uh, folks to take charge uh, of a street while it is closed down to vehicular traffic. Um, DOT can provide things like barriers uh, to, to help in the closing, but they cannot provide necessarily money. Uh, but um, one of the concerns is that when a street is closed, there won't be enough personnel out there to sort of monitor it, make sure to move the barriers out of the way if an emergency or essential vehicle needs to get through, things like that. Um, and so when an organization sponsors a street, they effectively uh, promise to sort of take care of it and watch over it during the hours that it is closed. And that's why there's an application process so that they can they can vet those, those groups. Hey, so there's two quick questions to follow up on Kathy Thompson's question. She's not my wife. Um, do those groups have to pay for like security personnel? And is the closure 24 seven or is it like nine to five or nine to six or something like that? The closures are usually a certain hour, certain hours of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in the form that DOT provides, uh, one does have to propose this, these many days of the week during these hours, and then they will, they will bear all of that in mind. Um, Kathy has a follow-up question, meaning uh, she, she, she writes, does this mean that the groups would provide security personnel? She has questions about liability. Mm -hmm. um, those questions um, we would need to go to DOT and sort of get some clarification on uh, as far as per security personnel in the very strictest sense of the word. I don't know that many organizations would be able to do that, um, but I think what DOT has in mind is just sort of people on the ground there that would you know help and let people who need to go through like a car or a delivery truck, something like that. But um, when uh, organizations um, apply, that is certainly a question that we can ask DOT to see okay. if uh, uh, we did for some more clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Kathy, you, if you have other questions or somebody else has like the, the technical details, you guys can just shoot them into the office so that, I mean, Jesus, they can all ask those questions of DOT. So those are good. Uh, sense, yeah. Lou still has his hand up, hasn't typed his question. Would you like to? Uh, Lou, do you want to type your question in? Just state what it's about. He may not know how. Uh, okay, you don't just. Uh, so you want to, you want to unmute Lou or? All right. Or... Speak, you... Lou. Speak. <laughs> okay. All right. Lou, you have the floor. Hey, Lou. How are you? Lou, can you hear us? Lou, can you unmute yourself? Here we go. Ooh. I'm muted by the host. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. There oh, you go. Here we, okay, great. Hi, Lou. Welcome. Okay. Good to uh, hear you. <laughs> what, are the, what are the repair plans for Ralph Bunch Park? It's still a, a very dangerous location. Has there any, anything been done about addressing that? Well, Lou, I mean, you know, it, there's, there's no major plans at this time for repairs at the... Uh, at there, we, we we do continue to inspect it, and we can try to do minor again minor repairs. But uh, to do any large scale repairs on there, I mean, we still have the scaffolding, which is an issue. Um, but it was uh, recently inspected as well by our OMP division, which is not us, and it, it actually passed for paved surfaces. So it, uh, I'm sure there's more issues that we could address there. Um, but our our maintenance crews did make some repairs there. We'll keep an eye and see if there's some more major. Uh, or if there's more trip hazards, we'll try to address them as with staffing as we can. We are we are limited with our staffing right now, obviously too. Um, we've been uh, having a lot of staff taking vacation time off, and a lot of people taking uh, sick time, and a lot of people falling ill as well. 
So our staffing is uh, challenging to say the least. So um, uh, trying to get additional work done on something is, 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 is a bit of a challenge as well. But uh, not, not to mention, we still inspect it and we still are moving forward and we will try to make repairs uh, where we can. Okay, great. All right. Thanks, Wes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Lou. Um, and that, hey, is Susan. The, that is all for the questions. No oh, answer. that's what you think. I got some questions for you, mister. Um, actually, Carol Brady has some questions for you. Um, first, I want to just actually, it's not questions, but um, I heard recently that ADA funding was um, allocated for Astor Levy to make the uh, bathhouse ADA compliant accessible. Um, so whatever you did, Wes, thank you. You may wave your magic finance wand or whatever. So I don't know when it's happening. Um, if you could find that out, that'd be great. But I just understand that money is there and it may be completed before November, but I, I'm not holding my breath. Um, Cause I understand it was possible that it could become um, a voting site or an early voting site. I'm not quite sure what, but um, so if you, yeah, I know exactly. Ronnie's like, yeah. Um, so thanks for that. And if you can find out poop for us for the next meeting, that'd be great. But um, I, will, I will follow up on that and, and update you with any information that I have. For okay, great. Thanks. Next thing is, um, there are a bunch of people on this call um, who shall remain nameless. Some people who had bolt cutters um, were claiming they were going to karate kick a certain objects out of the way. Um, right before COVID hit, um, not my wife, Kathy Thompson, and I were out walking on the Esplanade near the Conid Pier and noticed a lot of people were kind of coming to the end um, and there was a fence there and they couldn't get through and they were just like, it was it was craziness and that went on for a while. <clears throat> but through a lot of um, nudging and whining, um, people, many people um, helped with parks to get this the fence taken down or pushed aside and opened up. So now people can actually walk from, uh, you know, Glick Park up onto the Con Ed Pier. So thanks to Parks for actually doing that. It took a while. <laughs> I know it was frustrating for you, Wes. Um, Huh, but thank you so much. So that's, I think, helped a lot. And maybe, maybe prevented a few hundred or a few million infections of people without masks or gloves who are sweating on other people. So well, thank you. We're good. We, we, we hope to get the, the COVID-19 kind of made an issue with our contractor at that site. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he's pretty much done. We're waiting on Con Ed to actually finish it. The fencing was there to try to keep it secure. We're no longer mm -hmm. doing it. But now under COVID-19, that contractor... Um, is a smaller contractor. He's actually paying for the fence. He wants to get it down, but his staff is not working right now. So um, Parks is not gonna push that issue a lot with our contractors if they're not feeling it's safe. Mm -hmm. But we did see the issue and, and they are we are working with them to try to get them to remove it. Um, I think it's just a matter of them once they start getting um, going, mm -hmm. moving back again. Uh, that contractor uh, again, like I said, they're actually paying for the fence, so they they are motivated to get rid of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, <laughs> their lives or, or not necessarily not. They're not sure if they're considered essential workers at this point in time for what they do. But nevertheless, um, we did see it was vandalized, and we opened it up and moved the section. It was unrepairable, so yeah. it could walk through there. <laughs> yeah, nobody on this call vandalize it, just so you know. We talked about it, it was gonna go for a swim in the river with concrete shoes, but stop laughing at him, and I know Molly's laughing. Um, yeah, but so thank you though, we appreciate that. And I know a lot of people are appreciative of that, so that's a good thing. Okay. We, we are still working to get the rest of the temporary panels removed though, so after okay, cool. Great, that'll be wonderful, because we love that, good. Okay, um, does anybody else have any questions for Wes? Matt Bondi would like the floor. Okay, Matt, hello, come on down. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Wesley, um, I think you may have answered the question because I just heard you said that it was a contractor issue um, with removing a fence. And my question is um, with respect to the fences at our beautiful Sutton Place Parks, in particular, um, the one that was recently opened between 56th and 57th Street um, and connected there. Uh, the fences, the chain link fences are, are still present on both 56th and 57th Street. Uh, and I was wondering, is there a timeline or is it just simply a function of, like you said, uh, circumstances beyond everybody's control right now? Um, the fence at Sutton Place is a totally different situation there. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and I'd have to double check it, but it, it's been a while since I've uh, 
since that park was opening and, and what it was. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, what it is is the the there were some legal issues with that property, as you guys may know, and there are some issues with the condominium or the Sutton Place One, and they are installing the fence, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the final fence for, for that area. So that's not gonna be done by parks, it's gonna be done by uh, Sutton Place One. Um, but the temporary fences were left in place until that was done. And I, I, I would have to follow up and find out what exactly, I don't know if it is a COVID related issue of what the holdup was or, or at this point in time, I I'll be happy to follow up with that. But I don't believe, if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe parks will be installing the fence in that, at that location. If you could do that, I think we're Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense Figures. because they are doing work back there on the, on on the backyard behind that building. So uh, I guess until they're done and maybe until their fence is 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 ready, I don't know. But anyway, you know, thank you there very much. There was an issue with that with them, and, and it was you know, uh, like I say, in their hands, and, and also the judge uh, assigned it that way, from my understanding. So yeah, yeah. Um, and Matt, if you can keep an eye on it, that'd be great. So like if you see that the work is almost done or something on whatever. Um, oh, Reshma just sent a comment here. Um, do you, Jesus, can you put Reshma yeah, on for a second? Sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, my recollection from uh, one of our meetings where we had a presentation on Sun Place Park was that Sun Place One is responsible for that fence. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay, there had even been an article published okay. about that too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rashma. So that Matt, if you could actually keep an eye on it, I mean, so I give you homework. Um, but you know, when you when you're walking by or anything, just keep an eye on it. And if it looks like stuff's almost done, maybe let us let the office know, let Wes know, um, so that he could be ready to spring into action to make sure that things do not drag, which I mean I don't think they want a temporary fence there either, but um It'd just be good to have Wes be able to be sort of on the, um, you know, on the ready to strike when they're almost done. So we know that the fence should be coming in soon. So that'd be great. So Matt, you got homework. <laughs> go to a park or go to an open space and look around. Kevin O'Keefe would like the floor. Okay, okay Kevin, hello. Hey, everyone. Uh, I think it's a question for Wes. Uh, I know there was a face, uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. Um, I know there was a face covering distribution scheduled. I think it was from two to four today at Astor Levy. Um, yeah. Do we know how that went? Because I heard Central Park had some issues with long lines and not enough yeah. face coverings. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, the Astor Levy mass giveaway was scheduled for Friday, so it wasn't today. No, it, it was, was today. Uh, it, was happened today. it was it supposed to be from two to four today. Yeah, it went till five. Just what I had heard from people um, who were writing me that a lot of people showed up. Um, there was a little bit of crowding, um, but the staff that was there got them to stop and made them social distance. And apparently, everything was given out. So, uh, I'll meaning have everyone that was my understanding that it was happening on Friday, and the yeah. Friday's date was changed to Tuesday due to um, there was some uh, weather possibly oh. on Friday. So mm -hmm. I'll find out if it was done today. I, I, I wasn't aware and I should have been aware if there was something yeah. given at, at, uh, at Astor Levy. Mm -hmm. There may have been some, uh, a, a giveaway at another park, but I, I don't believe it was at Astor Levy, but I'll find out just to make sure. But it yeah. was one scheduled for Friday and that date, it was 10 to two, I mean, excuse me, 10 to 12. And that date has been changed to Tuesday for weather. So mm -hmm. Tuesday at Astor Levy between 10 and 12 should be the mass giveaway uh, until they run out. Next, yeah. you, you do, next Tuesday, you're talking? Um, yes, a week, from, a week from today. But there was one today too, which is interesting, but apparently went well, so that's good. Well, but that's what I'll say, I'll find out if yeah. it was Astor Levy because I, there mm -hmm. may have been a mass giveaway, but it may not have been Astor Levy. We're, we're, they're doing it in multiple different parks. Mm -hmm. Um, so Astor Levy was originally scheduled for Friday mm -hmm. and, and then, um, and, and they have different parks there, you know, like, uh, 
all over that they're that they'll be performing this. So, yeah. but I'll, I'll double check to make sure that something didn't happen. That you know, yeah. but if, if it happened at Aston Levy and I didn't know about it, that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah. It was in the um, I know Stuy Handler, the uh, Facebook Stuy Town group had it in there, and there were some emails that went around about it, and then somebody what? followed up saying it happened, and there were lots of people there, and blah blah blah. It went well, so. Yeah. Wes, 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 Wes is Tuesday, so uh, that that I definitely know. Okay, cool. Wes, right. uh, is Parks letting the community board offices know that uh, these mass giveaways are happening in the in Parks in their district? Because we haven't heard from Parks on that. We would have helped get the word out uh, if we'd gotten notice. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. I don't know if they're reaching out to all the community boards. Um, in most cases, they're, they're, they have a limited supply and they have made a lot of changes as well. So for instance, I mean, here's an example that I was saying that Friday was uh, set for, for Asa Levy and then they've changed it to Tuesday. So sometimes when, when we do stuff like that and um, for whatever reason, they may not want to adver over advertise it because then we look bad and if people, you know, too many people come, we don't have enough supplies or we change a date and it's hard to notify everybody. Um, it, it, it's supposed to be basically who's in the park and we're trying to make sure that people are using the face mask in the parks and they're trying to, that's why they're trying to do it in, in multiple different locations as well. So I will follow up and ask them and see if they, if they are reaching out to community boards. But again, you know, if, if we reach out to different groups and then they change the, the time, then we've got to try to reach back out to everybody. So that sometimes is, is, is problematic. Um, and, and they have done that already in many cases. <laughs> so um, I apologize for that, but, uh, but we'll see what we can do. Oh, oh, thank you, Reshma, who just had the thing saying that it was today and it's also scheduled for Friday. It asked for Levy. Well, I can tell you Friday's been canceled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So whatever uh, website you're getting that from, Reshma, that, that website needs to be changed. So maybe let Wes know what it is. Oh, it's actually, it's in the text down below. So the chat, Wes, you can probably find I'll, it. I'll be following up looking at it for today. Okay. Um, yeah. There is another Mr. Levy in Brooklyn as well. So I don't know. Who cares about them? That's not board I'm six. Sorry. We don't care. That's, that's yeah. a different world. That's, that's Long Island. Yeah. So, okay, good. Um, anybody else have questions for Wes? No more hands. Okay, great. Well, I guess, um, Wes, you are free to go. Take a donut. It was lovely to see you. And um, we'll see you next month. Thank you, guys. Enjoy it. Thanks, Wes. Thank Stay you. healthy. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so that takes number two. We're now on to number three, which is a chair's report. Um, Pam is not here tonight. Um, for those of you who would like to know why she's not here, um, she um, is at an event where she's performing. Um, so if you would like um, to be able to see the video of that event, uh, let me know. And uh, I think that I'm able to buy a ticket and then I think we can get a link to it. So let me know if you wanna see it. It's a comedy thing that she does that's really, really hysterical. It's um, women over 50. Um, so pretty good. So she's very funny, just so you know, um, as I'm sure you can figure out. She's a hoot. Um, but I'll get the link to if you'd like that. Um, just a couple of things in the report. Um, I'd like to thank, um, and I think we're all in the same boat here, all the first responders, uh, healthcare workers, um, people who are working in schools with food, um, you know, cleaning staff, um, our bail delivery guys, everyone who's out there, the cops, the firemen, the EMTs, the EMS guys, um, you name it, traffic cops, cops, people cleaning the subway, although I will not get in one for a while. Um, so just, I think that we thank all those people and I wanna thank two different groups of people here too, um, especially are the first responders and healthcare workers. Um, we have uh, Raj and I, our sister is up at Bellevue. So awesome. Um, let's see what else. Uh, and to our own staff at CB6, because you guys have been great um, guiding many of us who are incompetent at technology. Um, getting meetings going and actually just stepping up and doing this so quickly and getting us up and going. And like many community boards that I deal with, um, you guys are really good at this. So thank you. Um, it's just, I want to applaud you all. And I want to thank Molly, especially too, for guiding us through uh, this time uh, with a smile and with keeping us all calm. So thanks so much, Molly. Um, 
Also, um, I also would like everyone to keep in their thoughts people that our board has been, you know, have been affected by uh, by COVID. Uh, as I think most of you know, Louise has been in Bellevue, Louise Danker, for quite a while. Um, last week, uh, her husband Jay got on a call with a bunch of us um, at Tilden and let us know that he was able to go in and see her in her room, um, touch her face, hold her hands, and he was very sure that she knew that he was there. So, whew, so she's getting better. It's not easy, not sure where it's gonna go, but um, it wasn't good at first and now she's, she's hanging in there. So that's really good. And I know that another member of our, uh, our board's husband was affected and has been very ill, hoping that he's better. And I'm sure that a lot of you have good friends or family and I hope that they're all okay too. So send positive vibes to, uh, to our families. Uh, let's see, I think that's really it. Just hope that everybody stays healthy. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I don't know what they would be, but whatever. Um, but Pam does send her greetings. Um, uh, so no questions, then we can move on to old or new business. So um, if anybody on the committee has any old or new business, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, Jesus, you see any hands raised? Not a, not a hand, not a one. Gosh, you guys, I like that. Okay, because we covered it all so thoroughly, right? Um, but Wes, is, Wes, are you still here? He's, uh, he's, he's headed for the hills. He's okay, left. good, he's out of here, he's, he's heading to a park. Um, I just wanna thank the people on this uh, Zoom um, who helped get that stupid fence down off the Conhead Pier. Uh, I know that we were all just ranting and raving. I'm just so happy that it was done. It would not have been done if it were not for CB6. The pier wouldn't have been done if it wasn't for CB6 and that fence wouldn't be down. So thank you for being community activists of the best kind and getting something done. Um, Cause I know Kathy and I were out there that night and it was, it was hysterical, but it was sad that people who you think would have known cause they're riding their bikes that there was a fence there and didn't enact it all just pissed off. and like, what the hell is this where to come from? But it was incredible how many people were doing that and coming the other way too, acting like, why can't I get through a fence? Um, but thank you everyone for making that happen. That's sort of why we are all a part of CB6. So good job, everyone. Um, so, um, no more old or new business. Uh, hey, Susan, Brendan, do you have anything you want to throw out there? Uh, nope. Okay, awesome. Well, in that case, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Does somebody want to make a motion? motion I'll make a motion. motion. God, okay, everybody, you did it. Okay, um, let's save it. Uh, Dean, I see your face, okay? That was a motion from Dean to adjourn. This does not require a second, so if there's no objections, we're going to adjourn this meeting. Great. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. If anybody Thank wants you. to hang out for a few minutes and gossip, um, stay on if you want. Um, if not, have a lovely evening. See you guys Wednesday night at Zoom. Okay. Bye, yes. everyone. Bye-bye.